Hi, and thanks for watching the video. I wanted to give a quick update on where I am with the prototype of the Arduino smartwatch that I'm working on. Um, I have a working model right here. And this is not the final design because as you can see from the back, I'm still using that integrated um, sensor board that you can you can buy off eBay from from China. They're they're awesome. They have uh, accelerometer, magnetometer, a um, pressure temperature sensor, and a gyro, all on board that in these little tiny packages. So as a hobbyist who doesn't want to get down to the surface mount level, this is great because you can just mount this board. But it does add some significant thickness to the board. So ultimately, I want to go with the standalone service mount chips for the pressure transducer and the IMU. Um, ultimately, what I'd like to do is to be able to fit this whole thing inside one of these. This is a band that you can buy for the iPod Nano 6th um, generation. It's that little square box with the touch screen and it slips in here nicely. And this is a machined aluminum case. It's got a really nice strap. Um, the key is it's very tiny. So what I found though is that amazingly from the original prototype when I took off the sensor board and I left all the other components on this thing slides right in and fits perfectly. So, you know, black out this a bit, and this is a really super nice case. So as you can see, as long as I can fit everything within the width of that navigation switch, then this will snap in nicely into this case, and, and that would be ideal, uh, apart from making a custom case. Uh, which I'm still having a hard time finding somebody to do that for a relatively inexpensive uh, run. Uh, this would be the best possible option. And of course, even if it's a little fat, it'll still fit into that rubberized case. That'll That's stretchy and pretty forgiving. But I'd love for it to be in a nice hard aluminum case. So that's going to be the goal. And that's what the new prototype is all about. So really, this is still from the old design. I've got the boards on order from uh, Seed Studio. And when they come in, I'll be able to build the first prototype that hopefully will fit into that watch. And it'll be the last prototype of this type of watch with this LCD. Um, but I really like this LCD. And playing more and more with the Yatmel chip, I've been able to reduce the power down to about a half a milliamp in the rest condition. And I think a lot of that, or almost you know, half of that at least is coming from the board, uh, the IMU board. Even shutting down all the sensors and things like that, they have pull-up resistors and they have um, a uh, uh, voltage regulating circuit on there that's actually drawing more power than it needs to. So with my design, the the display itself should take about 250 microamps, and that should be the big load. I should be able to get the Atmel chip down somewhere around 10 microamps, and all the other supporting circuitry no more than 30. So I, I should be able to get down to about a third of a milliamp in rest state. That'll give me about two weeks of standby time on the battery charger. The new, uh, the new design also does a couple other things that I found just by playing with the prototype. I don't actually like the navigation switch. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. It's great when you just go up and down, but the this, this switch, you know, you have to really go up Otherwise, it catches on the push side of it, and it's uh, it's just not as friendly as I was hoping, and it's really bulky on the back. So I replaced that with three small push buttons on the side. So you'll still have the mode and an up and a down, but there'll be small little buttons. This will also give some flexibility if um, I wanted to design a case, I'd be able to have you know real you know big buttons operating those smaller buttons inside the case. The uh, the other thing is, instead of just having the 6-pin FTDI header for programming and for uh, recharging, I actually have a USB port to supply the 5-volt power to the recharge circuit for the, the lithium battery. So you'd be able to plug it into any USB charger. Um, this has been a big pain, <laughs> having to you know kind of put that chip in place and then you know sometimes I'll tape it because it may take like an hour to recharge the battery. Um, so ultimately you could make a clip that would clip on here and be able to do that nicely but I, I figured since I'm moving away from that it wasn't that big a deal. So here look at some of the functionality of the watch. I've kind of changed the front face 
to display you know the kind of information that the watch is capable of. You have the time, it's giving you the current temperature, it's giving you the battery state and voltage. This was kind of neat to begin with um, to watch how the voltage changes because it's not proportional. The voltage doesn't go down linearly with discharge. So it was kind of neat to see on a on a moment to moment basis kind of what the voltage does. And it also gives you a sense of when you start cycling through the, the watch's capabilities, uh, you turn on the sensors, how much that the battery can withstand that. Uh, how much does the voltage drop when I start drawing, you know, 10 milliamps. So it was kind of neat. And you can easily make an app to track that voltage over time. And then you'd be able to come up with your own algorithm for how you wanted to show how much power was left. Um, if you wanted to go by uh, overall, you know, voltage drop, or if you wanted to go by how much power has come out of it. Um, but you'd be able to get this good uh, profile of the battery voltage over time. And, you know, you can make the decision to do whatever you'd like. I've also decided to plot the pressure. I average the pressure over 10-minute uh, intervals and then plot it so that you can actually get this. You can see right here now the pressure is rising over the last hour. So, you know, that's kind of a gross <laughs> idea of, like, what's the weather doing? Since the watch hasn't been moving, because uh, this will also change with altitude, the watch has been sitting for the last hour, it shows that here locally uh, the pressure has been going up. So hopefully that means it's going to be a nice day. And then I show the time. So I have a menu system where if you just click, it'll come to this menu. You got a couple options, clock, which goes back to just displaying the clock, weather, which gives you the pressure and temperature information right there. So now this is all rudimentary. This is just displaying stuff to show you some of the capability, but there's lots of great ways that you could display uh, these kind of things. I wasn't very graphic intensive or anything. It's really just a demonstration, but it's the kind of thing that the hobbyists out there would, could go crazy with and really come up with some stuff. And because you have so much room in the RAM, you really do have a lot of room to run with graphics and, and animations and things like that. So it shows the temperature, the pressure, and the altitude. I'm upstairs in my house, so that's why I'm a little off the ground there. So any click gets you back to the clock. So back to the menu, that was weather. We'll look at acceleration. First thing I do in the acceleration is I turn on the accelerometer. It draws a couple of milliamps, so you, you want it off normally. Um, but it depends. There's certain states of the accelerometer where you can turn it on. It doesn't take a whole lot of power, but it will respond to taps. It will actually give you an interrupt based on tapping it. So you may decide that while the watch is active, I'm going to have it tap driven. So I don't have to worry about fumbling with buttons or things like that. Or you can tap it to wake it up. Um, so that's a great capability, and I'm going to explore that soon. This is plotting the raw data, but I've also created a little bubble level. So that as the watch moves, the bubble moves around. Oops, pretty shiny. So you can see just a really simple fundamental use of it, but kind of neat to have on your wrist at any time. You can see the pressure's leveling out. So that was weather, accelerometer, the magnetometer. Now, one thing about uh, working with the magnetic detectors is they're, they're not so standard. They need to be calibrated to your local conditions. You need to know what the maxes and the mins are in the X and Y and Z directions. So before we'll get any kind of accurate reading out of the magnetometer, we need to calibrate it. So if I go to MagCal, this is giving me the high and low, so the max and the min values in the X, Y, and Z axis. What I want to do is I want to get the max and the min values so that when I take a value, I'll know where it sits percentage-wise in its range. And that'll give me a better thing to use for finding heading than if I just took raw values. So in this mode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this just all over the place. I'm going in that rotation. And that rotation. So now the max and mins actually have some values associated with them. So now that we've done that, if we go back, 
on our menu. And we go to the magnetic field. You'll see that I'm actually getting a, a more reasonable reading. It's moving, and as I tilt it, you can see a change. So actually giving you a heading reading. And then periodically, like if I changed location, I could just go right into that uh, calibration again. And that's even the kind of thing where, you know, if you wanted to calibrate it, just get into the calibration mode, wear it on your wrist for 15 minutes. And you, you know, if you've been walking around, you've definitely rotated it in all the axis it needs to. So you would have that value uh, and you'd have a more accurate reading for your heading. See what else we have. That was the calibration set time. Just simple set you through. You cycle through, and then when you're done, you click down and send you back to the clock. Got of a place. I haven't implemented the date yet, but that's just as easy. I put a status app in here, really for troubleshooting, but also to get you some information that you might need. Um, for instance, the remaining RAM, so free RAM. Um, even with all this stuff loaded, uh, you know, you're talking 15K, uh, which is really amazing. When I was doing the same circuitry on a basic Arduino, an Arduino Uno, uh, I ran out of RAM. And mainly because the display is totally uh, mimicked in memory. So it takes half K, uh, 500, uh, yeah, 500 bytes uh, just for the display. So you're already, you know, halfway gone with your memory by the time you put any kind of program in. And what I was finding is I was having stack issues. As I was adding variables, I was corrupting data. And, and suddenly certain apps would work and certain other ones wouldn't. And it was just a nightmare. So switching to the, the 1284P and giving me you know 16K of memory, I haven't even come remotely close to using it, um, not gonna have any stack issues whatsoever. And you know, like I said, that gives you a lot of room to run. I also, the um, real-time clock and the barometer and the accelerometer and all those, they kind of have these self-test functions where you kind of ping them and they ping back a number. And that number should correspond with what unit that is. So this that's all this is doing here. And that's why it says okay, because it's checking with the real-time clock and it's getting the right response. This would say error if these were not working. So initial construction of the watch, this would be helpful to have a screen like this to run through, make sure everything's okay. And then settings. You can set the time to 24 or 12 hours. Uh, this allows you to change the contrast. So you can see the display blanking out. I can make it more contrast so you can see it more easily. See, there you go. It's hard hard to move up sometimes. And um, a beep. I, ha I don't have the piezo hooked up right now. The board in the new design actually has a surface mount piezo on it, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to install that. It's still about three millimeters high, which is a little too high for getting into the, the iPod Nano watch case. So I may just implement a small floating piezo in the back and just tape it to the back and then just move the wires too. So the good thing about that though is this small little iPod battery should fit into the region where the piezo was. And, and that'll give me the room because there's gonna be nothing on the board there. And then I made sure that everything next to it was very low profile. So by measurements, the watch should fit. But this is where you can turn the beep on or off. And then when you're done, you can exit. And then what finally, nope. Battery, this just gives you the raw analog digital value and the calculated battery voltage. Uh, currently, and my battery is a little low. My system's running on 3.3 .3 volts. Um, so I need to go charge this. I'm right down at my level. So the low dropout regulator is kind of just letting the voltage pass. Um, so that's that's convenient when you're taking data and when you want to make sure your ADC is working. Because uh, ADC takes power, so I put it to sleep a lot. So it's good to show there every once in a while when I update an app to make sure I'm not 
um, shutting it down and not giving it time to restart when I want to take data. And then finally, it gives you that history of the pressure. I just threw that in there so that sometimes the pressure changes so little, but the graph is always going to be from the bottom to the top. It's going to be from the lowest to the highest measure in the last hour. So you may see this huge swing in pressure, but this allows you to go and actually look at the pressure values to see, you know, is this a huge pressure swing or is it just a small pressure swing and this thing is trying to plot it as best it can. So that's it. Head over to my blog if um, you're interested in more information, you want to see some uh, more pictures of the construction, if you want to download the software, the board layouts, the schematic or the board layout, and um, if you want to try and attempt this yourself, all, all the information is there to be able to do this. And I'll be posting more as the new prototype comes in and as, um, as we verify all the operations and the construction methods used for it. So if you have any questions, drop me a line. And thanks for watching.